This is a download from BBC Learning English. To find out more, visit our website. The importance of being earnest. Episode 7. Algernon and Cecily are engaged, but Cecily thinks his name is Ernest, and so Algernon has rushed off to change his name. Meanwhile, Gwendolyn has arrived and is about to meet Cecily for the first time. Gwendolyn also thinks she's engaged to someone called Ernest. Hello, my name is Cecily Cardew. What a sweet name. I like you already. I think we're going to be great friends. My first impressions of people are never wrong. How nice of you to like me so much when we have only just met. Please sit down. May I call you Cecily? With pleasure. And you can call me Gwendolyn. You are here on a short visit, I suppose. Oh, no. I live here. Really? Your mother, no doubt, lives here too. Oh, no. I don't have a mother or father. In fact, I don't have any relations. Really? My dear guardian looks after me. Your guardian? Yes, Mr Worthing. She means Jack, of course. Oh, strange. It's never mentioned to me that he was a guardian. And I'm not sure that this news fills me with great delight. I have liked you ever since I met you, Cecily. But now that I know that Mr Worthing is your guardian, I can't help wishing that you were... Well... Just a little older and not quite so, well, attractive. In fact, if I may speak honestly... Please do. Well, to be honest, Cecily, I wish that you were 42 and unattractive. Ernest would never lie to me, though I don't always trust him, especially with beautiful women. I'm sorry, Gwendolyn, did you say Ernest? Yes. Oh, but it isn't Mr Ernest Worthing who is my guardian. It's his brother, his elder brother. By Ernest Worthing, she means Algernon. Ernest never mentioned to me that he had a brother. Well, they haven't been getting along well for a long time. Ah, that explains it. Cecily, you have greatly reassured me. I was beginning to get anxious. You are quite sure that it is not Mr Ernest Worthing who is your guardian? Quite sure. In fact, I am going to be his. I beg your pardon? Dearest Gwendolyn, Mr Ernest Worthing and I are going to get married. Now, when Cecily says Ernest here, she of course means Algernon, who she thinks is called Ernest. My darling Cecily, there must be some mistake. Mr Ernest Worthing is engaged to me. And when Gwendolyn says Ernest here, she, of course, means Jack. The announcement will appear in the paper on Saturday. You must be mistaken. Ernest proposed to me ten minutes ago. I've written it in my diary. That's very strange, because he asked me to marry him yesterday afternoon. Here, it's in my diary. I never travel without my diary. You should always have something exciting to read on the train. I'm sorry, dear Cecily, but I'm afraid he was mine first. It upsets me, dear Gwendolyn, but I have to point out that since Ernest proposed to you, he has clearly changed his mind. If the poor fellow had been trapped, I intend to rescue him at once. Whatever entanglement my dear boy has got into, I will never blame him. Are you referring to me, Miss Cardew, as an entanglement? Do you suggest, Miss Fairfax, that I trapped Ernest into an engagement? How dare you? Miss Cardew! <coughs> but they're interrupted by the butler Merriman, who arrives with the tea. The two women look angrily at each other. They can't continue their argument in front of him. Are there many interesting walks around here, Miss Cardew? No. Oh, yes. Several. From the top of the hills you can see five counties. Five counties? I wouldn't like that. I hate crowds. I suppose that is why you live in London. Quite a well-kept garden, this is, Miss Cardew. So glad you like it, Miss Fairfax. I had no idea there were any flowers in the country. Oh, flowers are as common here, Miss Fairfax, as people are in London. Would you like some tea, Miss Fairfax? Thank you. Awful girl. 
Sugar? No, thank you. Sugar is not fashionable anymore. Cecily puts four lumps of sugar into the cup, which she gives to Gwendolyn, no, no, no. who does not notice as she's short-sighted. Cake or bread and butter? Bread and butter, please. Cake is rarely seen at the best houses nowadays. Cecily cuts a large slice of cake and hands it to Gwendolyn. Gwendolyn drinks the tea and shudders. Oh. She puts down the cup, reaches out for the bread and butter, and finds it's cake. You have put sugar in my tea, and though I ask quite clearly for bread and butter, you have given me cake. I usually have a gentle and sweet nature, but I warn you, Miss Cardew, you may go too far. I would do anything to save my poor innocent boy from the secret plans of another girl. From the moment I saw you, I distrusted you. My first impressions of people are always right. It seems to me, Miss Fairfax, that I am wasting your valuable time. And here comes Jack. Ernest, my own Ernest. Gwendolyn, darling. Wait, may I ask if you are engaged to this young lady? To dear little Cecily? <laughs> of course not. Thank you. I knew there must be some misunderstanding, Miss Fairfax. This gentleman is my guardian, Mr. Jack Worthing. I beg your pardon. This is Uncle Jack. Jack! Oh. <laughs> and now. Algernon arrives too. Here is Ernest. Cecily, my love. Wait, Ernest. May I ask you, are you engaged to this young lady? <laughs>